So we're looking at our next part in the series, uh, The Fight in Gospel Ministry. So let's come before the Lord. Lord, we just pray that this study would be blessed of you, that you would use it to your glory. We ask this, Lord, in your name. Amen. Amen. So we talked about faith, the importance of faith. It's it's a shield. You're going to get lots of attacks from the devil, make, trying to make you doubt the word of God, doubt God. You've got to fight back with faith and push back by faith. The next thing we need is the helmet of salvation, which is Ephesians chapter six seventeen. A good, more deeper, in depth series on this of on Ephesians is a, a grace to you by John MacArthur uh, so if you go to grace to you uh, by John MacArthur he's done an excellent series on Ephesians chapter 6 uh, and it's a very good series and also uh, the book of Ephesians if you go to uh, Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones recording trust um, or if you type in Dr. Martin Lloyd-Jones website uh, you can get Lord John sermons on Ephesians for free, excellent material, uh, and you can study them. So the next weapon we need is the helmet of salvation. Now, if you don't put a helmet on, a sword comes down; it's going to crush your head. So you've got to have that helmet on, and it's Ephesians six seventeen. And take the helmet of salvation, and the word sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, the helmet of salvation. So. You've got to understand what salvation is and not doubt your salvation. Now, a lot of people say, I, I, I don't know whether I'm saved or not. How do I know that I'm saved? Here's how you know you're saved. You trust Christ and him alone. It's as simple as that. You understand the gospel. Jesus was the Son of God. Is the Son of God. He came down from heaven. We are sinners. We have broke God's commands. We lie. We, 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 we commit a breaking of his Ten Commandments. Do not lie, do not steal, do not commit adultery. We break those commandments. And we come under God's sin, uh, God's judgment. We're sinners. But Christ came and took our our, our, our judgment. He, he took our punishment. So it says in Isaiah 53, He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Christ, the wrath of God came upon Christ. And he took our judgment for us. In love he gave his life for us. And as we believe in Christ, he says, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. And as we believe in Christ and him alone, not what we do, but in what he has done, we get peace with God and we're forgiven. Then we have to live a good life, but it's not our good life that's saving us. It's our confidence in Christ and what he's doing through us, you see. Now, that's salvation. Now, there are ways people doubt their salvation. If you continue in sin, you're going to be doubting your salvation because you're never going to get peace by the Holy Spirit. So you've got to clean up your life. And the way to clean up your life is to get down on your knees and say, God, I can't clean up my life. I can't do it. And and he then will clean up your life. So give up your self-effort. Get on your knees and say, God, I can't do this. I can't clean up my life. And God will come in and he will clean up your life. Okay? Then you'll get peace with God. You'll get assurance of salvation. The other way to get assurance of salvation, if you're walking in the right way, some people say, I don't know if I believe or not. You know if you believe or not if you are focused on Christ and he means everything to you. Okay? So you keep looking to Christ. And whether you're saved or not, you will be saved if you keep trusting in him and looking to him. But that's the way to defeat the devil and the, the fight uh, and be victorious in the fight is being clear about the gospel about salvation 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 1 Thessalonians one Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 8 but let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and also the helmet of hope of salvation. Salvation gives you hope. Gives you hope that one day you're going to be with God for eternity. So, 
It's important to have a grasp of salvation because it will give you strong hope for the future. Okay? And then finally, oh, there's two more, two more. The word of, of the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit is the word of God. So let us go back to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We've talked about that before. It's the Word of God that you need in the battle. We've said that before. Let's just go through a few, few scriptures. Psalm 119, verse 11. Psalm 119, verse 11. Hundred and nineteen verse eleven. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. We've got to hide the word of God in our hearts. Proverbs chapter thirty verse five. Proverbs thirty verse five. Every word of God is pure. Every word of God is pure. It's all pure. So you've got to stand on the word. 2 Timothy 3.16 2 Timothy 3.16 All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. God's word is inspired. Uh, God breathed. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. God breathed. It's breathed out by God. This is this is the mind of God in this, folks. And then Revelations 19.13. And then you can study some of which I'm going to give you. Revelations 19.13. Just amazes me when you get into the Bible how how deep it is. Revelation 19.13 says... He was clothed with a robe, dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. So Christ is the Word of God. So when we're reading the Bible, we're reading about Christ. If you want to know about Christ, you've got to read your Bible. These people who say, I'm a Christian, but I don't study my Bible, well, if you're a Christian, you follow Jesus. And if you want to know about Jesus, you've got to read this book. Okay? Other scriptures you can look at. Romans 10, verse 8 to 9. Matthew 24. Verse 35, Psalm 119, verse 105, Isaiah 55, verse 11. Let's turn to Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, 11, so shall, Isaiah 55, verse 11, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Isn't that amazing? God's word will stand, and it will prosper, and do what it's supposed to do. General Robert Lee says, In all my perplexities and distress, the Bible has never failed to give me light and strength. That's the general. One writer said, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good all the good of the saviors of the world is commanded to us. Sorry. I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good of the saviour of the world is communicated to us through this book. That's President Abraham Lincoln. I'll read it again. I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good of the Saviour of the world is communicated to us through the book. So all that Jesus did for us, all that he's done, was communicated to us through the book, the Holy Bible. That's by Abraham Lincoln. So, in the battle, get to grips of studying the Word of God. And then finally... 
We need to pray in the Spirit. Let's go to Ephesians 6 again. Ephesians chapter 6. It says, verse 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. We need to pray in the Spirit. There's prayer and there's prayer. 